What is going on, everybody? Nazdarachi coming back at you today with another episode for Dragon Ball Legends. Now, we do finally have the version 1.15 update, which I'm sure all of you are well aware of. There was an excruciating 24-hour maintenance period, which was because of the Google Play Store, first and foremost. It wasn't Dimp's fault. They pushed out the update, and there was some miscommunication with the app update for the, the version on the Google Play Store, and everything got pushed back. So. I was having fun reading a lot of salty comments across the Facebook groups and Discord and everywhere else, but that kind of threw me off, and that's why I'm a little bit late here. On top of it coming out about, I don't know, probably about 12, 13 hours ago the game relaunched. It was like 9 p.m. my time, I think, last night. But before I get too far off into rambling, we are today going to cover the new units which are going to be four new ones. Android 18 is the only returning old sparking on the banner. There's a couple new EX units like Goten and Trunks have an EX variant as well, a few others. So we're gonna quickly go over all the units, make a few summons, and then version 1.15 inherently has a lot of cool UI changes as well. So we might as well actually dive into those first because it doesn't take very long to cover them. I'm sure you guys have already started playing with this, but I'm going to kind of explain what's going on here just in case you're not in the know already. So when you are looking at teams here, when you go to change your equip, all of the equipments are now assigned a letter from the lowest I've seen I think is like E all the way through Z being the best. So when you're looking at pieces of equipment, not only gold, but silver as well, because as you can see, I have a Z rank piece of Krillin equipment with the three gold dashes there. You will be much more in the know on which pieces to sell, how to quickly sort them, and which pieces you're going to want to use on your characters. You know, obviously, if you have an S or a Z, you're going to want to focus that over a B or an A. So that's kind of how the lettering system works on the equipment. It's just a huge quality of life improvement. And I am super, super stoked that the developers are adding all these really cool little updates and developing the roster as well. You guys, I do have a feeling that big things are coming in this game. We just need the roster support first, and then they're going to be pushing out lots of stuff like variable game modes, tournaments, like the world tournament, maybe raids versus big bosses, and other really cool events like a boss rush mode would be great. But we need the roster first, you guys. The game is just so new that this is kind of the situation we're in. Where we're going to build the roster, get all the bugs worked out, get the UI to the best possible place it can be, and then you're going to see major changes come after that, once they get a solid footing. So, moving forward here, beyond just the equipment, on the very bottom of the screen here, you may also see there's an ability bonus number. And what that number basically means is it's looking at all of the Z abilities from your benched units, your active units, all of the passives that they contribute towards one another, and the equipment that they're wearing, and it assigns the party just a percentage-based number for the boosts that they're getting. So let's look at here the team that I have pre-built that's got the highest ability bonus rating. We're looking at an Androids team here, and I haven't made any pulls yet, so no 16 yet. We see 1128%. So let's hit the details button here. It brings up Cell. We can see all of the Z abilities on the entire team that are affecting him, his unique abilities, the effect that the equipment plays with him as well, and this overall number is assigned to him, which is then added up for all the different characters, and that determines your team's ability level. So that's something to keep in mind right there. It's just going to really give you a really great breakdown of everything going on in the game and how to organize your team. So this will help novice team builders and it will help professional kind of players, professional players of the game, but it'll help them just maximize the efficiency of your teams. Now you can also see there's a little scouter with little tick marks right there and that's just denoting the efficacy or the, the strength, effectiveness of that individual character on the team and what they're contributing. So you can see here there's just tons of really good synergy on my Super Saiyan Goku team right here. Everyone's got their scouters ticked up pretty high 
And I'm, I'm not exactly sure how these scouters and tick marks translate exactly yet, but as soon as I figure that out, I will definitely let you know. For now, it just seems to be a combination of their level, their raw stats, and their contribution to the team they're on. But that's basically all there is to it, you guys. Again, just huge quality of life improvements to help you team build. It will help you get the right equipment sorted and sold when your equipment fills up. And again, I love that. I love Dimps for these quality of life improvements that they're doing for us in the game right now. So, with that being said, there aren't too many other significant 1.15 changes. I believe they fixed the Roshi duplicating the buffs glitch. I'm not 100% on that, so if you know down in the comments, feel free to let me know. But other than that here, you guys, there's not too much that has changed there. If you go to the shop, you will be able to buy the brand new Kamikolo starter pack. As you can see, I've already picked that up. That's how I have him, but I have not made any summons yet. And if you go to the exchange shop, I've already spent a good bit of rare metals, but you can buy master's pack tickets enough for a multi-summon. I only had to buy eight of them because I've saved up two from daily challenges, so I have enough for a multi. We're going to go ahead and do that as well. But be sure to check out the sales if you're a premium player. And even if you're free to play, be sure to get those tickets if you can. They're pretty much the most valuable thing you can spend these medals on right now. Especially if you've got your Spirit Bomb Goku at 5 stars already. So, let's go check out the new banner here in the summoning section. And see what goodies they have in store for us. We're basically looking at Go Tenant Trunks, Android 16, and Piccolo as the new sparkings on the banner. They are quite good, and there are guaranteed sparking tickets. As with all Ultra Space Time summons, you get these ones by using 15 energy per day. And it was kind of crappy that once the game came out, there were only about th three hours, two and a half hours to get that first ticket, which I was able to do. I hope all you guys got yours as well. But they didn't leave us very much time to get that done for the first day there. But I'm sure there'll be extra days, so if you miss a couple days, it's not gonna be a huge deal. There always seems to be extra tickets. But jumping into the actual banner here, we're gonna check out the characters. Goten is actually a little bit better than what I was giving the two kids credit for when we had seen the V-Jump scans. He does have a really cool main ability. We're gonna go over that real quick. His stats are relatively good. Really the only downside to him is that he only provides defensive buffs on his Z ability. But again, it's still better than having Sparking Pan on the team because she's not helping any of the current Hybrid Saiyan meta team builds out whatsoever. Checking out Goten here, we do have you know, fairly good stats. He's 59,000 strike attack. He is the strike character and Trunks is going to be the blast version. Majin Buu Saga, that's really cool that we're starting to see that. Kind of weird that they delayed Android 16 and Kamikolo for this banner though, right? It's a fusion of old pre-Perfect Cell units and then Majin Buu, but I'm not complaining. I for one in this game think that we're going to get multiple variants of most all of these characters, very similar to Dokken Battle. That's kind of already being shown in the fact that we have multiple Piccolos, tons of Super Saiyan Gokus, different Vegetas. This game is going to be that type of game where eventually the roster is going to be so big you're not going to actually have to have every single unit in the game. Which honestly is why, I don't know, that's not why I haven't been stressing too much about the characters I don't have. But, Goten here. Two Red Arts cards. That is excellent for a strike-based character. We love to see that. Nothing out of the ordinary there, and we get a chance to faint on the Kamehameha. So you can inflict the stun with Goten here, and he buffs his own strike damage. Green card, 10% to strike damage inflicted, and minus one strike arts cost for each hybrid Saiyan that's battling with Goten. So quite a powerful ability right there, like that one, but this main ability right here, this is my favorite. Destroys all the yellow blast arts cards in your hand and randomly draws one new card. Enhances the damage of the next arts card used based on the number of yellow cards were in your hand when you cast this ability. And then it just gives you a breakdown of if your hand was completely full of yellow cards, you get a 200% bonus damage on your next card. So, kind of a very one-off skill, but if you happen to get a 200% damage blue card, you are going to be sitting very pretty. Might be a way to 
combo this with another character in the future to force this to happen, but I'm not entirely sure about that. It probably all does it without the chance for you to swap out. But if you have him, play test and feel free to let me know down in the comments. Z ability again here is, whoa, wait, what hybrid chain base strike attack? I thought this was a defensive buff. I was wrong. I was mistaken. He is now actually an extremely good character to have. I thought, I guess we had mistranslations on the scans because on Reddit and the translations I saw interpreted them as having defensive buffs. That's really good. And then of course, you're going to want to team him with Trunks here. He will get much more strike damage if you're comboing Goten and Trunks together. And then he's got a point character buff here. 30 timer counts right from the start. He has an additional 20%. So if you're bringing Trunks and you're running Goten on point right from the start, you automatically have plus 60% to your strike arts damage. So Goten here, then 20% on the Z ability. This is a really good unit, you guys. Much better than I had originally gave him credit for. Significantly better. We got Trunks here now, so we could be able to run through this hopefully pretty quick. He's just going to be the blast version, and I actually quite like that little animation there. But yes, this is the blast version of the Hybrid Saiyans duo right here. He is yellow type to Goten's green. Goten was blue, right? No, green. I thought Goten was blue. I totally colored him blue in my UI there. Oops. We got mixed cards here, so he does not bring two yellow cards. We got Vegeta, Kids Tag, Hybrid Saiyans, and Vegeta. So he will build well on a Vegeta buffing team, on a Super Saiyans team. Like Super Vegeta would pair great with him right here for that dual tag linkage there. And then of course on your Hybrid Saiyans team is the ideal team build for him here. We have, let's see, nothing out of the ordinary there. Uh, pretty similar to Goten, he's got a blast buff on his blue card and inflicts enemy with a tribute downgrade minus 30% to key recovery. So using the blue card will also slow down the key recovery of your enemy unit there. And very similar to Goten again, the green card is actually identical, but it's buffing blast damage. So the more hybrid Saiyans you're battling with, the more your green card is going to be better, more effective on the green card there. Main ability here, inflicts enemy with a tribute downgrade a minus 100% to key recovery for 10 timer counts. It's actually very similar to the blue sparking Krillin. He can freeze your enemy's key recovery as well. And plus 75% to own vanish gauge recovery when your own health is higher than your opponent's. So this is a very technical skill you have going on here with the second part of this main ability. It's going to be harder to use effectively than Goten's main ability, which just destroys cards and gives you a raw damage buff, but this is still extremely effective right here. You can play this card right here, stop your enemy from regenerating key, and you'll be vanishing left and right. And again, I was mistaken. I thought that they were going to have defensive buffs, but he is buffing the blast attack of your whole Hybrid Saiyans team. So Trunks and Goten are actually now essential members of this team. Kick out Hero Gohan, kick out Sparking Pan, and you have these two with Super Saiyan 2 Gohan, both Sparking Trunkses, and then, what was the other unit I'm thinking? That's six, right? You got these two, Trunks, Trunks, Gohan, and Gohan, the yellow Kid Gohan as well. So that would be your six units for your Hybrid Saiyans team there. Obviously, just like Goten, you're gonna wanna pair them together. He will get a blast damage buff, and he's a point character as well. So you can honestly, in the very beginning of the fight, be switching back and forth between Goten and Trunks, and they will both have, just straight out the gate if they're together, 60% damage buff to their respective damage type that they favor. So these two cards are actually very, very good. Again, much better than I gave them credit for. Piccolo here, also an amazing unit. Let's actually check out the Hellzone grenade. I'm actually curious to see what this looks like. I don't think I've actually started using him yet. I'm training him up. He's like level 1,000 right now. All right, so that's extremely cool. Just straight out of the show. I love the way that looks right there. You could have thrown that on an Ultimate Arts card almost if it had like a, a nice lead-in combo, and, and I would fall for that for sure. So we got a ranged character right here, kind of like the Trunks card, but 59,000. It's pretty standard in terms of stats right there. Really good key restore rate as well. And he's ranged, he comes with two yellow cards. Uh, regeneration, Emerging, and Super Warrior. Nothing out of the ordinary, everything's pretty good there. I have nothing crazy there. 
So the Hell Zone Grenade, Major Explode Damage, Gain Attribute Upgrade, minus 40% to enemies cover sustained damage cut for 30 counts. So we've seen this mechanic in the game before, but basically kind of similar to the Perfect Cell, I believe. He's going to negate the abilities of the other Piccolo, the Red Trunks unit, the Android 17 sparking. Every time they sub in mid-combo, they get defensive bonuses, and this is something that's going to negate that right here, which is quite powerful. This unit right here is actually the most similar unit to Int Janemba that we are familiar with in Dokkan, because we're going to get to his main ability in one second, which is really awesome as well. Green card here doesn't have a great buff, but it applies to the entire team. So that's kind of why it's scaled down a little bit. 10% to all your allies' blast damage for 15 timer counts. And it will cancel out any uh, stat debuffs you have. So if you have a debuff minus to your blast damage, or like the Trunks main ability where you have minus 100% to key recovery for 10 seconds, this green card will cancel that out. Any attribute based downgrades. So not stun or faint or anything like that bleed it won't affect those but any stats based downgrades you will be able to nullify with that we have the main ability here i love this one 50 percent to blast damage inflicted for 15 timer counts so very similar to the og sparking saiyan saga vegeta but as well he nullifies his own unfavorable element factors for 45 seconds so this Piccolo being blue here, if they sub in Bardock and they bar lock you and you're stuck, you can't swap out, you pop this main ability right here and Bardock's green advantage will have no effect over your blue type. You'll basically be on even footing. And you'll have 50% blast damage to match his buffs to his strike attack. So you'll be able to keep him at bay and do quite a bit of damage to him. So I personally love this card right here. This main ability is amazing. It's a new game mechanic. This is the first time we've seen any type of type advantage nullification. And again, I'm loving the fact that the devs are exploring all these different abilities and quirks through these passives and main abilities that we see on this page right here. I absolutely love it. 25% tag regeneration based blast attack during battle. This team is still missing Majin Buu. We're getting him soon, as we see Goten and Trunks are in the Majin Buu arc, but for the regeneration team to be fully fleshed out, we are going to need some really powerful Buu units. That's, that's my opinion on that. Right now, you have Perfect Cell, you have the other Sparking Piccolo, you have the EX Piccolo, then this Piccolo, and that's about it. I don't think there's too many other characters right now that we're looking at that are effective or even have this regeneration tag at all. But I do believe that it is going to be a top meta team once we have some really powerful Boo units like Super Boo, Boo Han, Kid Boo, obviously. It's going to be a really powerful team, you guys, because you'll be able to have a whole bunch of different Boos on the team and then stuff like this on the bench right here. So I'm excited for that in the future. And this Piccolo as well is just a monster at dealing damage to any androids in the game, which will include Cell. So keep that in mind. You can see here he's got all types of buffs, inflicts enemy tag Android with downgrade, plus 35% to blast damage received for 20 timer counts whenever an Android enters the battle, or whenever Piccolo enters the battle. I'm not sure, I don't feel like figuring that out right now, but either or, whenever someone comes into the battle, Androids are getting screwed here. And then against Androids, he just has an additional 50% to blast damage. So when you activate his main ability, he'll have just right then and there, 100% to blast damage versus androids. And then if you have the Intimidate going on, they will be taking 35% extra blast damage to what they receive. So again, this Piccolo is an anti-android monster, and he can nullify any type disadvantage, making him an amazing card. It's weird though, I have actually used him in a training mission, and he's not wearing his hat or his turban and his shoulder pad cape here, but when you're using him in battle, he is. So I thought that's kind of curious, which is, I think, flip-flop from the other Piccolo. I'm not sure. Either way, it's inconsistent. But still, great unit. Next up here, we have Android 16, a unit that I've been waiting for for a long time, and a piece that I felt was necessary to finishing out the Android's team. 
That's really cool that he does the Hell's Flash as his blue card. I know he has a self-destruct as well, but the animation and this, the card art looks amazing on this. Like, even for my UI, I like the transition from blue to purple to yellow where his arm cannon is. Just, the card art here is, is absolutely top-notch. And the self-destruct here, which is almost like Dragon Ball Fighters. I was actually hoping this mechanic would be in the game. Oh, that's the toss up and the bear hug. I love it. I like it. Unfortunately, unlike Fighter Z, I don't think he survives with one health. I think it will actually take him out of the battle. But still, if you need to use that mechanic, I believe it does flat damage. We're going to check that out in one second. He is a defense type here with, wow, well more strike attack than blast. So you're not going to be wanting to use your yellow strike arts cards with Android 16 here. And his only tag is Android. Thank God he has two red cards in his repertoire. Nothing out of the ordinary there. Hell's Flash deals major explode damage plus 30% to own self-destruct damage. So ideally, just like in the anime, you use the Hell's Flash first and then you will blow yourself up as a last resort following that. And that honestly should pretty much nuke a character under most certain circumstances. But I don't know, if they're really strong, it may not be quite enough to completely kill someone. I'll have to try and pull them in playtest and see. 15% to self-destruct damage and restores key by 30. The key restoration, I believe, is the better part of this card. Since you can only use the self-destruct once, then you're going to be using this green card probably more for key recovery than anything else. But you can kind of use this to extend your combos a little bit more if you happen to get some green cards piling up in your hand. That could actually work nicely. And then ideally, your blue card into green card into self-destruct, which is the final strength here. Major self-destruct damage to enemy. This self-destruct damage does not depend on your own health, but deals a fixed percent of damage, plus 50% to allied character Gohan's key restoration speed for 20 timer counts. So, kind of interesting that if you team build him with Gohan, you'll get key regeneration on any Gohan, I guess. Doesn't, doesn't specify that it has to be Super Saiyan 2 Gohan. But they don't share any tags, they don't share any Z abilities. So, I probably wouldn't do that, you guys. I don't think that that's really the best idea. The main ability draws the self-destruct, very similar to any Ultimate Arts or other self-destructing characters like Cybermen and Chatsu that we've seen in the game so far. 23% to tag Android-based strike defense during battle. Not super useful, so maybe this version of Android 16 isn't super necessary to have on the team, but he seems like a really fun character to play with, and I still think this Z ability is probably better than the EXL's health buff. Personally, I like offensive buffs best, and then defensive buffs as a secondary, and then Z abilities that buff health or health regeneration, health restoration, kind of put those at the bottom of the pyramid there. He's got the sustained damage cut, so very similar to Android 17, who's also, I believe, a defensive type or a support type. I believe he's defensive and he leans towards blast, but they will both have the damage cut here, reduced by 50%, and when changing cover, restores 50% of damage taken during cover. Wait, what? Reduce damage received by 50% until combo ends when changing cover restores 50% of damage taken during cover change and plus three to own substitution count. Nullifies abnormal conditions. He's got a robot body, so I guess he can't bleed, he can't be poisoned. I wonder if Android 19 has that too. I'm actually not super familiar about that. But maybe he can't even have stat debuffs. I don't know, we have to find out. Let me know down in the comments what you guys know about these unique abilities here. Obviously he takes the reduced damage from the cover change, but yeah, that's quite interesting. Android 18 is a returning unit. We don't need to spend too much time on her. We have Trunks Kid as an extreme unit here, and Goten, both in their non-Super Saiyan forms. And it looks like that's it, you guys. Two new EX cards and four new Sparkings. I like those odds, so I'm going to go hit the Download All button, and we are going to make some summons here, you guys. We may not get anything at all again. 1% rates for individual Sparkings. Let's get this done. All right, we are back, you guys. We're going to hit up first and see if we can burn some bad luck on using these tickets for the Masters Pack here. As well, again, you guys probably already know this, but check your gift box. They did give everyone 500 Chrono Crystals for the long hours maintenance. So we got Red Sky, 
no pods on Super Saiyan. Excuse me. Excuse me. There is no excuse for you, Frieza. And uh, red text. So hopefully this is all just EX cards. Unless I see Super Vegeta, I don't really want a sparking here. I'd rather push that math onto the new banner. But I may have sabotaged myself here. You know, we're all good at that. And I've seen way too much of that EX curling. Same thing with Raditz, man. I'm tired of these old, old units, but it is Master's Pack, so what can we say about it? A third EX unit, Nappa. Fourth EX unit, Chatsu. So we got run of the mill old EX units out the booty hole here. I don't want to see these limit breaks. Can we skip through this? Come on. All right. So that was our tickets on the Master's Pack. Probably not worth the exchange medals that I just spent on them. But you guys might get lucky, so you never know. Let's do a multi summon on the new banner here. See if we get any type of good luck. I did not have, well, I had reasonable luck on the Super Saiyan 2 Gohan banner, but I didn't get Gohan. I got Goku and, you know, everything but Gohan there. So, this is not a very good sign right here so far. We had no pods and just green sky, blue text. This is going to be a Dudu Summon. Now, there's still a chance that something can show up, but it's extremely low. I honestly wasn't even expecting to see a sparking, but we got the new trunks. Whoa, two in a row? Oh, I was hoping that was going to be go 10. All right, well, off of what? Oh, a transformation! A transformation! We got trunks on the first summon from a transformation. And I even called that was like terrible lead in, and I was like, there's still a chance. And uh, that's the reverse jinx in action right there, you guys. So I will take that. I still, like I said, I still don't have Super Saiyan 2 Gohan, so my hybrids team, not that great. I would honestly prefer 16. Sparking 16 is the one that I kind of want the most, but let's jump in and try again here. If we can get Goten, then actually things would be quite nice. But I, I ooh, a lot of slow moving pods there. There's more than we could say about the last summon. I hope you guys have had incredibly good luck on this banner as well and cleared all four of the new units. Whoa, gold text. Gold text. Gold, gold text. We got some gold, baby. Oh yeah. Right off the bat, another Trunks. I kind of wish that was anyone else but Trunks. But dang, we have a three star Trunks now, you guys. Hybrid Saiyan's blast damage is gonna be looking relatively good. Hero Roshi, Hero Roshi. Another EX unit right there. So we got two trunks so far. Interesting, very interesting indeed. We need Goten because we need those straight out the gate abilities of having trunks and Goten paired together. Without those two, I'm not entirely sure that it's really effective to run, you know, run them on an active slot. I mean, they'll still be good, but Goten, man. We need poor Goten. All right, with two sparkings in a row on two separate draws, I don't think we're going to see another one here. I don't think. I honestly don't. But it would be really nice if we could see 16 or Goten. I did again buy the starter pack. <clears throat> we have no gold text. Nothing good looking so far here. If Vegeta shows up, I'll be really happy. But no, Goku just died. Good night, Goku. We loved you. We knew you well. Another Nappa. Ugh, oh, it's unfortunate, you guys. I do hope that you were able to pick up both of them, though. We did get Trunks, so it's not a total bust. Hopefully the daily summons will be generous to us, and we can scoop up a Goten. And uh, hopefully Super Saiyan 2 Gohan comes back soon as well. All right, I will throw one more single summon at the game, and that's it, you guys. We're going to save the 200 for stamina refreshes and daily draws because they run out relatively quick. I only did, I think, 30 CC per day for the daily challenges at this point. I'd honestly prefer more CC instead of the stupid Master's Pack tickets. But, again, you guys, I hope that you've had amazing luck. All of the money that I used to buy the Chrono Crystals today was provided by Gameflip. So, might as well give them a full-blown shout-out here because their services for banners like this are exceptional, you guys. 
we got hero pant that was terrible but game flip is an app like you can see here or a website that you can go to and the main purpose the reason why i partnered up with these guys the reason why i'm recommending them is because you can purchase gift cards for play stores right here and you can generally find some really good discounts right now i'm seeing a bunch of 11 percent off they had some 20 percent off ones on here earlier but basically you can use these sales right here to purchase gift card codes again at a discount and then upload those codes into your iTunes or your Google Play stores respectively and then you don't have to give anyone access to your account like a Chrono Crystal vendor from overseas. I really cannot stress how many people I've heard from that have been scammed by crystal vendors. So do not, unless you have a friend or someone you know very well, do not trust Chrono Crystal vendors. Instead, go to a service like GameFlip here where you can just purchase gift count codes. You do not have to compromise the security of your game account and you'll never have to worry about somebody in another country having backdoor access to your account. With GameFlip here, you do as well have a money back guarantee. So some of these Amazon gift codes are not bad at all. You could probably use an Amazon gift code to then buy other gift cards. So yeah, you have a money back guarantee. Basically you purchase the code, they're going to email you the redeemable code right after that within a few minutes. And then if there's any problems, you can get your money back. So this company has been great with me. They're a startup company from America and the service has been really invaluable for getting Chrono Crystals at a discount price because everyone loves free money and GameFlip will help you guys out in terms of spending less if you're a premium player. So again, I definitely recommend checking them out. Their links are always going to be in the description of my video and I'll throw it in the pinned comment as well with a special promo code that uh, I believe gets you like 10 or 20% off your first purchase. So be sure to check them out again, you guys. And other than that, I do hope that your summons were extremely lucky on the game. If you're a free to play player, I hope you didn't get screwed over too bad. And if you spent money, I hope you got everything you could have possibly gotten new off the banner. Feel free to let me know down below. I love to hear from you guys, and if you enjoyed the video, feel free to give me a thumbs up as well. I supremely appreciate it. Helps spread me out on YouTube, and you guys have been really good about doing that so far. Again, I appreciate that a whole lot. If you're new here, consider subscribing. I'd love to see you again on future videos. And that's pretty much it, you guys. We ran a little over 30 minutes, unless I can edit it down a bit. So I don't want to hold you any longer. Comment down below. Let me know how your polls were, if you're happy, if you're salty, and any other questions or comments you have on the game, the new UI, the changes, ability bonuses, anything like that, comment down below. And I will see you on the next video. Peace out, you guys, and have a great weekend. Later. Later.